Thanks, Jan. All right, I'll just plug in my laptop. The deck is pretty short because I really want to showcase the dApps because that's what I'm most excited about. Yeah, uh, I call this creator apps to creator dApps. Um, but first of all, GM, I'm Steph. I'm a DevRel engineer at Polygon Labs. I'm also Oceans404 on Twitter. Um, and my job is awesome because I get to interact with builders and projects every single day. And sometimes I see projects from literally the first day they were ever conceptualized and created at a hackathon and then get to see them turn into products and sometimes either even creator economy products. So I'm going to mention some of those towards the end. Uh, but first of all, I just wanted to talk about Polygon really quick. Polygon believes in Web3 for all and bringing the world to Ethereum. There's tons of people in the world and everybody cares about different things, but we want them all to be onboarded successfully and be able to benefit from DeFi and the broader Web3 ecosystem. And so we're always thinking about like, how can we onboard that next billion? What's it going to take? Turns out, 50 million people worldwide consider themselves creators, and the creator economy is estimated to be worth over 100 billion, and this is a stat from last year. So what if we could somehow onboard all of those creators and also the content consumers to Web3 so that they could reap all of the different benefits, own their content, all of those kinds of things that we've been talking about through the event? There's a bunch of different problems that I've noticed and everyone else I'm sure has noticed with content and apps today. The first one I would say is the revenue problem. So there's these centralized profit sharing models that are pretty opaque, honestly, and they, they siphon revenue and royalties away from the actual creators and keep them on platforms themselves. I don't know if anyone's a content creator, uh, but there was this tweet in May and it said that Spotify and YouTube paid creators 7 billion and 15 billion, but the per capita disparity was pretty crazy. Um, so apparently Web3 paid out $174,000 average per creator in 2021, and then compare that to Meta paying out 10 cents a user, Spotify $636 an artist, and YouTube $247 per channel. Like, that's, that's a really big difference, right? I mean, it's, it's almost obvious from just this, but obviously there are other problems as well. So this is just one more thing about Spotify. Just over a thousand artists broke a million dollars in streaming proceeds on Spotify, and only 16,000 made more than 50,000. And that is about, I think it might be an average household income in Denver. I'm not quite sure that number today, but that's not really that much money considering this is someone's full-time job as an artist. So we wanna change that for creators. There's also a big ownership problem. With the current solutions that we have right now, you don't own your content. I don't know if anybody saw the Twitter API news over the past few weeks. They're shutting down their free API and now you have to pay to pull your own data. So sometimes you, this just shows that you really don't own your content if you have to pay to be able to pull it down and put it other places and access it, which is a huge problem. And then the portability problem, which is kind of similar to the ownership problem, and Natter had discussed this earlier, your content and your audience, your influence, all of that content you created, you can't take it from app to app. And so if there's a new platform that comes out, you have to rebuild your content and your audience. And we see that with TikTok coming out, Instagram creators were kind of like, what the heck, I gotta learn this new platform, I need to create new content, and then I need to post it both places. That takes time and it's difficult to do. So in my opinion, t the traditional content giants are failing our creators. And so these are some of like the, the platforms I want to sadly shame a little bit today for not doing better for creators. Because come on, we can do better. But luckily there's hope. Uh, so I found two different links that give a really good overview of uh, the dApps in the creator space that exist today. So first you can go to Live Peer Studio. They highlighted these four different dApps. So LensTube, which is really similar to decentralized YouTube. The 402, which is a live streaming platform. Bonfire, um, which has tons of different tools that you should check out, and Stream ETH. And then I also found that Lens has this huge ecosystem of dApps. So I'll show you those two links really quick. So this is the Live Peer Studio. And I really like Lens and their Lensverse because they show all of these different app dApps. They have eight featured, but you can actually filter dApps by categories. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more. So you can look 
for um, social media, or maybe you're interested in curation. Algorithms is interesting to me because like, what if you could create your own algorithm for um, like the content you want to see and then sell that algor algorithm, excuse me, to your friends. So it's almost like curation as a service. I get really excited about this stuff because there's really no limit to it and you can program in anything you want, which is awesome and open in a way that we just don't see in traditional social media or tools for creators. So I really encourage you to check out lens.xyz slash apps to find at least one DAP to onboard to today if you're not using any, because I really do think this is the future of decentralized content creation. So I just wanted to show you a couple of these. This is LensTube. I think it looks like a combination of like TikTok and YouTube, but the creators own all of these videos and you can collect them, you can pay the creator directly, and I love that we know that we're directly supporting creators by watching this content and interacting with likes, anything like that. So that's LensTube. There's also dumpling.lol. I think the aesthetic of this is really cool. So shout out to their front end developer and their UX, everybody there. Um, but this is a streaming platform. Uh, you sign in with Lens, and I think you can collect in the same ways. I believe LivePeer is also integrated to this one, right? Dumpling? Possibly? Uh, okay, cool. I also want to show Favor, which is another app. I love that this is mobile first. I think we need more mobile first social media dApps. Um, as developers, for some reason, it's easier to just start with a web app, but I know Lens has some uh, mobile app libraries, so check those out if you're creating an actual mobile app this week at the Hackathon. And then I also just wanted to highlight that a lot of these projects were built at hackathons or started at hackathons. Um, I was part of Next Video Build as a sponsor uh, with Live Peer and Shan. Shout out to Shan. But there were so many super high quality projects that were built during this hackathon by developers that just wanted to get their hands dirty or solve a real world problem. So I encourage you to check out the showcase for Next Video Build because this was awesome. And then I have two more projects to talk about. The first one is Orb. I don't know if Orb devs or any of the team. Woo! Orb. So I met Orb at Graph Day. I don't know if you know this, but Orb started at Graph Day. They submitted to the hackathon, and it's just been such a joy to watch the platform and your team grow because it's like, wow, these were devs that showed up to a hackathon, and look what they've created. It's amazing. And then the last team I want to shout out is Splash. I just saw Joy earlier. Is she here? She, she might have just left. But Joy was at Polygon at the Pit, which was an accelerator in Singapore two weeks ago. And she and her partner are creating Splash, which is a platform where you can earn interest by watching content. So she not only wants to reward the content creators, but also content consumers, which is a really interesting tokenomics model. So I feel like content creators should start thinking about how they can reward their audience for interacting and watching. So really bullish on this project as well. Coming back here. So again, check out those two showcase links. One is livepeer.studio, and the other one is lens.xyz slash apps. But I truly do believe that Web3 solves real-world problems for content creators, and it's onboarding both content creators and content consumers to Web3, so I'm incredibly bullish and just excited to be here and network for the next 30 minutes and learn from all of you. Thank you so much. I'm Steph. Uh, this is the presentation. <laughs>